There we go. We're going to give it just a few moments for some people to come on in. I did not see any pre-submitted questions, if I can be honest, but uh, I would be glad to go over anything you guys have, or if there was, please let us know. We'll be glad to assist. All right, and we will, uh, you can start posting questions as you wish in the Q&A, please, but uh, we will start taking questions in just another moment or two and give it some time for people to come in. Alrighty, already. Yeah. Starting out as a quiet one today. Hey, Manal, I see you have your hand raised. Um, yeah, you know what? I think enough time has passed. I think we can get started on this. All right, Manal, here, I'm going to mute you real quick. And then if you have a question, please post it. Let us know what you got. Hello, Greg. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Oh, so I just had a quick question regarding, like, can you explain how does the external or guest accounts work um, in prod? Like, for example, if they have a link, do they have to create an account every time? How does it work? Just like a general knowledge. Let me, so the guest account is designed to be um, mm -hmm. specifically kind of an account that you would be able to um assigned to users so that they can come into decisions without needing an account to be in decisions to perform the actions that are needed, um, depending on what your use case is. So let's go to that real quick. There should only be one guest account created by default. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask a little bit more. What would be your use case? What are you trying to accomplish? And we can kind of go to see if the guest account is the right option there. Gotcha. So we have bunch of users that are completely external to the company that don't have anything like they don't have network ID, any um, record in the corporate directory, and they need to access this form um, that I have created in decisions. And then mm. should be able to, what we will do is we will have, uh, this will be in prod, so it will be CamDMZ server. So they'll get a link, but they should be only able to fill that form out and then just submit it. They can't see anything else, but My question is like, how would they be able to get into decisions um, and just look at that form? Uh, there, are few, there are a few <laughs> ways you can do that. So okay. let's, uh, this is going to go a little bit more into integration details. Uh, by the way, here is our uh, documentation on this that Jasmine has just provided. Um, Jasmine, would you mind also putting that into like the uh, main chat for uh Because uh, I, I can see it, but just to make sure everyone can see it. Awesome. Thank you very much. So let me go into here. It's a form, right? You want them to be able to access a form that's in a flow, submit it, and then go from there. So let's jump into that. We've got a new lunch and learn here. Let's make a flow real quick. This will be... I'm going to work at the speed of light here, hopefully. And I realize I am not sharing the proper screen. That's my bad. Just a moment here. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. Because I realized I was pointing to the documentation and everything, and you're looking there like, what's going on here, you know? <laughs> like, There we go. <laughs> they wouldn't put their data. They'll submit it. I'll just say proceed, and then here's a... Uh... Way to get out of that. Let's save. Go into the other flow. Show form. Oh, come on now. Don't do this. There we go. And it is not liking me, so we're going to have to keep going in and out and do this. There we go. And we don't need any inputs for this. Let's save it. All right. So 
Let's go into this flow real quick. You configure integration, you're going to link it to it, and then you can run this as uh, probably a user interface, right? Because you want them to be able to interact with this form and then go from there. And because my decisions is really slow for some reason, I'm not sure why it's not populating that as it should. But let's go to view. And now here is where you customize your options, right? your different ways that you can let users get into decisions to be able to perform these actions. You can provide them with a URL that requires the login link, but you don't have to do that. You can enable the guest account, which um, our whole documentation page goes over that here. I'll show you as well how to do that real quick. But um, once you enable the guest account, then anyone that is coming in with that link as a guest would be able to do this. Or you can authenticate it by the session ID. So you can either use the current one or you can specify one as well. So I'm going to say use current session ID for this real quick. We'll copy this. And then if I pull up in incognito tab here and then paste that in, I'm not logged in here. But it's going to let me access this form, as you can see. See, this is the form, right? We told it to click proceed. We hit proceed. And now this part, maybe we would want to have like an end form session or like redirect them somewhere else at the end. I'm going to hit open portal here because it's going to give us into the user ID, even though we we're in the name session, even though we're not technically logged in. But there are ways to get around that. And I'll show you how real quick. So... Let's um and like, just oh, to confirm um correct. So if you do guest account, they don't have to like actually create an account, right? Like put username and ID because I enabled already correct. the guest account. Okay. Yeah, you can okay. use you can do guest account for that or you can use um session ID and they won't need a username or password for either of those options. Perfect. Gotcha. Thank yep. you. Absolutely. And just one more thing I want to show you with mm -hmm. that. Just to make sure they can't see the portal later, let's say that we can uh, navigate them, not navigate, sorry, open URL, not in a new window. And I'm just going to go to our home page, which is HTTPS. All right. And now it's complaining because of the thing here, but uh, we can fix that real quick. Also, if I go to integration details, additional, ah, display setting, that's what I want to change. I want it to be in the center. I don't want it maximized. I want the size to be auto. And then we'll just leave that there for now. And let's copy this link once again. This is saved. Yep, confirmed. All right. Now let's uh, open that incognito window again. Go here. So it's in the middle now, right? So I click to proceed. And now I'm back in my home page. So they're not even interacting with the portal whatsoever. Got it. And what if I just want them to completely like exit out of the tab because they can't see anything or do they have to have like certain link to go? Mm, I see. It's uh, it's funny you mentioned that because I've actually been working um, mm -hmm. I've been working with a part of that step that's supposed to initially do that, the close dialog slash window option. And I've been talking with a few people internally as far as why this isn't working how I expect it to, because that's exactly what I would think. You want them to just close out of the tab, right? Not be mm -hmm. redirected. So I will keep looking into that because that's going to solve a problem on my end and your problem by me figuring that out. So I will let you know and email you as soon as I have a solution as far as closing the actual window itself. Okay, gotcha, because that's what I need them to be not, since they're external, they should not be able to look anything else. They're just completely kicked out of the form. Right, right. I absolutely understand. Yeah, I know that opening a workaround to like your home page is probably not the best option at the moment. Like you just want it to be, you know, gone. Got it. And one last thing, since we are here, um, for example, I know like we have flow data and we can get the current user. And mm -hmm. if I... For example, want to send back an email to that person, whoever filled out the form external user decisions doesn't have any record for that, right? 
No, it does not. Because if they don't have an account that they're being created in, it's not going to be fetching their user indecisions. Got it. It'll, yeah, it'll <laughs> either be running it as guest, if that's how you're um, authenticating by, or as running a system context. It's not going to provide a user. Unless the only way that you could do that is if they had to put in their email into this form, then you could pass out that parameter to the send email step and, you know, provide that to them. Okay, gotcha. Because I do have an email and then one user asked me, like, why can't IMQ just like automatically take out my email from somewhere? And I was like, how do I do that? But uh, I'll just still yeah. ask. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you that can if sense. they log in. They can if your authentication mm -hmm. is log in, but it can't send an email to like mm -hmm. an account that doesn't exist. Got it. That makes sense. Thank you so much. This helped. This was helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. And I see we got another uh, question in chat. I have used simple JS on a forum to close the tab window. Yeah, there might be a uh, there might be a uh, JavaScript that can be configured to allow to do that as well, like customly. If the close dialog slash window option is not working as expected, I will keep investigating this, and hopefully, we don't have to go to the workaround to building a JavaScript. You know step but that is an option all righty looks like we don't have a lot of people in here today so um, if anyone has any additional questions be glad to hear uh, I'm going to linger around here a few minutes while that's going on. Um, what is the purpose of get cookies in the get page variable and how to use it? Ooh. Ooh, interesting. Let's see here. So we have to exit out of this. I'll just save this. Why not? I can get out of that. And then we've got to make sure that if we are creating such a flow that would be using the get page variable, it has to be, where is it? Folder aware. Get page variable. Let me take a look into this real quick. So data type page variable cookie value. Interesting. Let me think if there would be a use case of getting the cookie value. There's the only thing, well, I can't say the only thing. The first thing that comes to mind with using this has to do with uh, clustered environments. When you have a decisions clustered server, decisions has to have um, sticky sessions enabled via cookie-based session persistence. So maybe you have more of a non-traditional load balancer configuration where you have one server that's mostly running backend processes and another one that is designed to direct users to it. Outside of configuring that in the load balancer to probably move users around, perhaps knowing which user cookie and therefore determining which server they're being directed to might help either with troubleshooting or might help display certain data that you want. That would be my thought as for what the get page variable cookie value would be for. I can take a look into that real quick. If you'll just give me one moment to check. Like, I mean, we both understand what it does, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's useful, you know? Let's see here. If app A redirects users to decisions and puts something to cookies, can we get that cookie value into decisions? That would seem to be the case with this if you're trying to get that cookie value because it does store it into the... Um, it does store a cookie associated with that user session. So let's see. 
application A redirects users to decisions and puts something in your cookies. I don't see why you couldn't, is what I'm trying to say. I don't see why you couldn't do that. Let me... Hmm. Wrong one. Wrong one. Um, let's see here. I will have to uh, check exactly um, exactly how. That should be possible to get that cookie value, but I will need to determine that. I will need to do some testing on my end. Is this uh, related to um, getting the information in via the SSO thing? Because I am still working on that. If it's not, that's all right. I'm just trying to see if these are tied together so I have a little bit more context on this. Uh, but Flow runs on the server and doesn't know about cookies in the browser unless we have some sort of UI and decisions. Hmm. Would this be cookies associated with the page then? I'll ask our developers about that directly, actually, and see exactly what kind of cookies this is pulling and why it might be used. Um, in fact, I'll put some. I'll put an ask in. Um, yeah, I'll put an ask in uh, right now, if you don't mind, because it doesn't seem like we're really waiting on anyone else at the moment, so. I'll put that in. Now we'll confirm exactly which variable name is trying to take uh, the cookie value for. The authentication, yeah, should be able to do that. Why not, right? Let's see if we can save this and just run this real quick, right? We didn't actually specify a variable now, did we? Page context ID not found. Oh, that's because I'm running it in this flow that we need it for the typical uh, page variable from. So let me just run it in a different kind of flow real quick. See if it allows that or not. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It didn't like that. Page context ID could not be found. So the same. I'll have to set this up within a uh, page flow. Variable name decisions auth. If you're finding it there, why not? Let's do that. Debug. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, hold on.
right? Let's do that. Save it. Add it. And we'll add it here. Get page context by page ID. Probably. I was going to add it as an action to this as well, just to um, allow it to I picked the wrong one. That's why. I picked the wrong behavior. Use your action flow. If this doesn't work, I'll just use that uh, internal option to be able to grab that. All right, let's turn the whoop. Turn on the global debugger. There we go. Love it. Well, we didn't complain about it. All right. Let's try this again. Yeah. And that's the decisions off. That's exactly what it was. I didn't do that. Oh, well, I didn't have it turned on now. My bad. Let's try this again. Did I just click the wrong one? Oh, this is... No, no, this is the newer one. Hold on. I just did decisions.auth as the variable name. You're talking about as far as the debugger here, page name, folder ID. Yeah, I'm not 100% certain exactly uh, why it's returning null on this by putting in decision slash off for the cookie value. Let's see. It outputs page data. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me look at that real quick. See if we have any. I'm looking at it right now. Let's see. Uh, 
All right, let me expand it out. Give me just a moment here. There is a decisions auth value. that's stored in cookies, but it is not retrieving it for some reason. So now the question is, is this variable broken? Because I see the I can even see the value of it uh, when I open DevTools. So why? Hmm. Why would it not pull that? Did you just pull a string? Bureau name is decisions off. Let's see if it's something weird like this. This shouldn't cause it to work, but well, that would break because I'm doing it in here, so that's my bad. Okay. Let's go back to LNL here, drop that down, and then we should have cannot do it from the global debugger or something, or is it just not going to just going to make this difficult on us. There should be page data there. That's interesting. And it's not liking that. It's treating as if there's no input values. So what if I change this back to page variable, expect to type a string, Variable name, decisions off. We're going to put that away back to our original one. If I maybe I specify it here, save it, go back here. And get the cookie value from there, save it. Make sure this is running. Run it. No, it's still not liking that. Let's just confirm that's not something with our setup real quick. By um, it would be in the variable though, it would be in cookies and we'd have to specify. This is even work as we expect. So if I do this with folder ID, turn this on and run it, do I get a folder ID output? The answer is yes. That works as expected. There is something off with this step. Okay. These, uh, don't worry about that. That's from a scheduled job in the back. Yeah, let me look into that and ask if uh, that's supposed to be running that way or not. Because it, it seems like we shouldn't be running into that issue. We should be getting the cookies back because I've confirmed in my web browser that those are the same ones that are running. So why it cannot retrieve those, I'm uncertain. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. All right. Do we have any more questions or just anyone else in the Yeah, absolutely. Glad to help. It's uh it's interesting that's not bringing that back. Perhaps it's a bug. We'll have to look. All right. Um if we don't have anyone else coming in, we might just wrap this up early.
I'll give it ye old countdown. Going once. Going twice. All right. Thank you all for joining Lunch and Learn. I will see you all again on Wednesday, and you should be seeing Jeremy tomorrow. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.